It is one of my absolute favorite times of the year. The time when we get to look back and celebrate the films that made the biggest impression on us. I need movies every year of my life, no matter what, but you've heard this time and time again, but it's true. This has been yet another tough year, given how all of our lives have been thrown off and we've just been through so many challenges. Going through all of those experiences in 2021, for me, has just further emphasized the fact that movies are, yes, a great source of entertainment, but they are also deeply valuable ways for me to, to cope, to process, and even to grow as a person in the real world. Some of these movies I'm about to name tick some of those boxes. Others tick all of them, but all five movies on my top five of 2021 have one thing in common. They played a significant role in defining my 2021 and making it better. Kicking it off right now with my number five pick, I have Coda. First off with this one, I just absolutely love when there is so much hype out of the first screening of a movie and then I see it and it actually lives up to the expectations that that early enthusiasm set. Coda did just that. But then on top of that, this was a movie that I first saw way back in January out of Sundance and it had the staying power to keep the story on my mind throughout the entire year, clearly making its way to this list and also becoming one of the films that I am rooting for the most this award season. And I think that that is not just a sign of Coda being one of the most moving movies of this particular year, but also a sign that Coda will likely have staying power well beyond it. Everything in it just, it works so beautifully and on so many levels. It is a, a super sweet and enjoyable coming of age story, but it also rocks quite a few deep and very touching character arcs that dig into the importance of family, but also the importance of a family evolving as people grow older and as their situation changes. I have become a very, very big believer that Amelia Jones's star is going to soar from this one, and it very much should. But it is that cast chemistry between her, Troy Kotzer, Marley Matlin, and Daniel Durant that is just the beating heart of this movie. And that heart is so incredibly strong. Now, for my number four, it's James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. How does this movie even exist? Big applause right now to whoever was involved in letting Gunn make this movie his way. This thing is wild, irreverent, and very, very violent. And listen, if it was just that, and in James Gunn's style, I probably still would have liked it quite a bit, but it's making this list because it can be all of those things and also have a significant amount of heart and real purpose to it. I can have my fun, but while also experiencing meaningful character arcs, seeing heroes rise and change others around them for the better, like Ratcatcher 2, and also even dig into a big bad with the power to break your heart. I think Starro's line, I was happy floating, staring at the stars, is one of my favorite lines of dialogue of all of 2021. Gunn basically delivered a movie that was exactly what I was hoping for, but also so much more than I ever could have imagined. And with an A-plus soundtrack too, I have to add that. All right, moving on to my number three of 2021. It's Tick, Tick, Boom. The funny thing is, I saw Tick, Tick, Boom on Broadway when I was real young, way back. Too young to really appreciate the story of it. So my very faint memory of that viewing experience had me a little skeptical about whether or not the movie would really strike a chord with me even now. But clearly it did because it's on this list right now and it did big time. Given my age right now, a lot of the things that Jonathan Larson experiences in this story just really hit home. Whether it's being in a creative field, weighing passion versus money, figuring out when to follow your heart versus what might be expected of you at a certain age. And then Andrew 
Garfield in that role. I mean, I obviously knew he was extremely talented, but this right here is a next level performance that just shows off such immense range and a whole bunch of skills that I never knew he even had. And I'm also just wowed by the fact that this is Lin-Manuel Miranda's feature directorial debut. It just feels like this is especially challenging material to adapt to screen, but he does it in ways that give us access to the characters and the pressures that they're experiencing while also making it feel like a high energy and in some scenes, magical spectacle. So impressed by this one. Now for my number two of 2021, I am going with the Mitchells versus the Machines. After what I saw in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I pretty much came to expect bold and hugely creative animation swings from anything that Phil Lord and Chris Miller are associated with. But even then, the animation style in this one just, it wowed me to no end. Every frame in it is vibrant and beautiful all on its own. But the quality that I think impressed me most about the visuals is how they work to enhance the, the characters and strengthen the evolutions they all go through. And oh, do I love those characters so, so much. They're all so unique and just oozing with passion for their favorite things. And I think that the movie very successfully emphasizes that they can and should have those passions, but while also giving a little to each other so that they could be strong individuals and also be a more supportive family unit. And, you know, I, I don't like making generalizations like this, but isn't that one of the hardest balances to find in life in general? The right mix of, you know, putting yourself first and being able to achieve your dreams and your hopes, but while also being able to give some of yourself to your loved ones and supporting what they want as well. It's just some really beautiful stuff, and especially how Katie's relationship with her dad evolves. It's one of those things where as soon as the movie ended, I just absolutely had to call my dad and uh, tell him how much I love him. And it's a very special thing to me when a movie inspires you to do something like that and, and also just serve as a very powerful reminder how lucky I am to have a dad like that. All right, we're on to my number one, and I'm cheating a little with this one this year, but you all kind of knew it was coming, I think. My number one slot is going to the entire Fear Street trilogy. I don't even know where to start with this one and feel a little overwhelmed by the fact that I just want to say so much now. I, I, I think, I don't think, I know these are the movies that I rewatched the most in 2021. I think the ensemble is exceptional all around and I'm just so excited about how many newer super promising talents it introduced me to that now I'm very eager to follow. And the fact that Lee Janiak directed all of these films back to back to back is a true feat. And she really knocked them all out of the park, developing a, a hugely engaging legend that very successfully spanned the three films. I mean, even knowing the end result of the trilogy, I still thoroughly enjoy thinking about it and also digging even further into the wealth of highly creative and thoughtful details that that story offered up. And also, Janiak made that Sunnyvale shady side realm just feel so real and full all on its own, but while also masterfully filling the towns with loving references to the horror films that served as inspiration for the events that we see unfolding here and for the characters that are right in the middle of it all. And speaking of the characters, I am going to hold myself back from doing a full roll call, which is not easy for me. But at the very least, I do want to stress that I think that Dina is one of the most striking heroes of 2021 with an especially powerful arc. And also, the shady side killers are now pretty iconic in my book, as are a number of other elements in this trilogy that have made me go out and buy clothing inspired by the movies and also my waxwork record. This score and soundtrack is by far my favorite of the year. 
If you happen to hear anyone driving around LA just blasting the main theme of the Fear Street movies, I am willing to bet that it is probably me. I could really go on and on listing off everything I love about the Fear Street films and fear that I am rambling at this point, but I think that one of the biggest reasons why it scored my top spot this year is, is because it just made this slasher movie lover happy. In the middle of a tough year, it meant the world to me to have films like these that I could totally lose myself in and then walk away from feeling hugely heartened and satisfied. And then on top of that, get to share that enthusiasm for them with the fandom that this trilogy sparked. It is really something special. And, you know, I know this is always a very bold statement to make the year a movie is released, but I feel like I've watched these films enough this year to say this with confidence. The Fear Street films aren't just favorites of 2021 for me. They are up there with some of my all-timers. All right, that is it. Those right there are my top five favorite films of 2021. Please, please, please drop your own list in the comment section below. I would really love to know what movies made the biggest impression on you in 2021. Also, I know I'm gonna get more opportunities to express this gratitude before the year closes out, but I do, I do feel compelled to do this right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for celebrating yet another year of film with me on this channel. This channel is really my happy place and it has become that because of all of you. So to everybody out there who has ever given me a single view, a like or contributed to this community, thank you. And I absolutely cannot wait to celebrate more movies with you in 2022.